Hello everyone, this is Food is a Conversation Alumni Edition, session 81. We have been on a little break, I'm sorry about that. We have a new bootcamp to, to organize and other very exciting activities what Future of Foods is, uh, is working on right now. But most importantly, what are these conversations about? We are introducing our uh, ecosystem members who attended any what the F uh, Future Food Institute organized so far. So it can be the master program, uh, Food Innovation Master Program, or any previous summer schools we organized, and now recently the graduates of the Food and Climate Shaper Boot Camps. Let them be a digital version or an in-person uh, version. So actually today, our guest, Ciao Martina, Ciao. <laughs> so she attended one of the in-person boot camps we managed to host in 2020 despite uh, the pandemic. And um, well, without me giving out too many details, she will tell you about her experience and uh, what she learned uh, with us and how she applying the knowledge. Uh, right now, what is her other uh, journey in, in the food system? And uh, the most important thing what I need to mention here, that we actually have a few boot camps coming up right now. Uh, so the next date is the 25th of June, the kickoff of the next digital uh, boot camp, actually the fourth edition. Then on uh, the 13th of July, we have Marettimo, another location in Italy where we have actually very limited space given the, the circumstances uh, in, in the, on the island, uh, but we still have some um, spots for that boot camp as well available. Uh, that's a one big full-time program in person. And then uh, the other one will be in Polica in September. So that's basically the second boot camp we will host there in, in a beautiful castle, uh, along with other activities what Future Food uh, actually carries out at that beautiful location right now because we opened our future food Mediterraneo um, chapter uh, down there. So everyone, I encourage you, please um, go to the Future Food at Academy website and inform yourself about the program or reach out to us directly and we are very happy to tell you more. And now, I think it was enough from me. So I would like to hand over to my guest today and ask her, please introduce yourself, tell us where you are dialing in from and how did you end up on the bootcamp in Polica last September? Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Nice to uh, see your participation <laughs> on the direct. And I'm Martina. I'm almost 26 years old. Right now I'm uh, near Florence in Tuscany, but I usually live in Turin where I study. I'm finishing my studies there. And so how I finish in the bootcamp in Polycom? <laughs> nice question. I don't even remember uh, actually how, but I, um, when I was uh, trying to apply for my master, I, I just came up on the website of the Future Food Institute and I was like, okay, I really love what they are doing. They are really trying to bring change here and uh, it's Italy based, so amazing. I really liked uh, your idea. And then I saw the bootcamps uh, while going to google and there was the pandemic and everything and you wrote me hey it will be live you you will meet people and go outside and <laughs> learn about the mediterranean diet so I was okay i have to do it after six months of online classes i just i was so happy to have this possibility and uh, so i i came to polica this september and uh, it was i think maybe the best week of my year um, totally and I really had an amazing time there and I've met so many guys and, and students and but not only also entrepreneurs and I had the possibility to um, you know connect with a lot of people and who I'm still talking to like uh, Lauren for example you remember her and uh, uh, it, it was nice and I will always remember I think you, you were with me uh, on the sea uh, oh, on the, oh, on the when, boat. yeah on the boat and uh, that was one of the more magic moments of uh, mm -hmm. always I remember with the sunrise and uh, on this boat we went to visit this uh, Alice of Menaika where they fish sustainably and they explained us how they do that and how important it is and yeah I, I think that was like the best days of all the week but uh, we had a lot of nice moments where we learned to make pasta <laughs> and Peter Kloss uh, <laughs> helped us in uh, tasting uh, uh, in the tasting activity and it was really fun and a uh, really nice experience I really enjoyed it so for everyone who is watching this, please, guys, go to the bootcamp. 
thank you, you. Thank it. you for the advertisement. <laughs> so uh, you named some of the activities of the the, the in person bootcamp. What I must yeah. say is definitely the unique element of the in person activities that we can immerse in the local communities and and act, like do tangible, more tangible uh, experiences than over the digital format. But of course, we do have some methodology, uh, which is basically the backbone of both educational programs. And that's where we, we provide all of the speakers and so on to inspire the participants about uh, different topics in the food system. And then you also have a hackathon at the end. Um, so yeah. how was that experience for you? Um, so uh, at the beginning it was a bit stress, uh, stressful because uh, <laughs> we had just two days to come up with, uh, I, I think it was how, how to make a pasta dish more uh, meaningful to people, more, more mind, mindfulness uh, with the pasta. I, it was something correlated to the Barilla experience and everything. And uh, we were like, okay, how to make a pasta dish a more mindful experience i have no idea but th then uh we had this team of, of five uh, we were all really different also from age and ex background and everything so it was uh fun to come up to an idea that uh, was fine with everyone because <laughs> we fought a bit <laughs> like because of, uh, everyone wanted happens to sometimes it yeah it happens like a high-paced environment yeah, yeah, exactly. But at the end, I think it was, um, we, we had a nice idea. And so I was pretty happy on how it ended up. So it was fun at the end. And, and then again, Polika, it's the best place to work <laughs> because we had this amazing view. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. yeah, so that's true. That's yeah. true. And um, so you also mentioned that you are actually uh, still studying, right? You, you are doing your yes. master program and um, it is a program organized by EIT Food. Uh, mm -hmm. And you have this possibility to uh, study on different universities on diff about different topics, uh, food system topics. So could you yeah. please tell us a bit about this program and, and what, what universities did you pick for your four semesters and what are your next steps uh, in your studies? Okay, so uh, the master is a really in no, uh, it's really new because I am I am the first one of the first students of this master because it was born in uh, 2019, I, if I remember correctly, and it's um, uh, it's sponsored by the AIT Food and it has different university partners. I think there are uh, six in all Europe. And you can choose um, a different university for every semester and each university has its own specialty. So, for example, I went to Turin for the first and the last semester where we focused more about the micro microbiology and the safety of food mm -hmm. and how to have a, a, a good product also safe for the health. And uh, so it was more centered on that. Then I went to the University of Hohenheim in Stuttgart. I mean, I went not physically, uh, unfortunately, but um, that was really, really inspiring because it is one of, I think, one of the leader university on, of uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so it was really nice because I had the opportunity to meet some uh, professor uh, who did with coffee and uh, agriculture in uh, South America and in um, developing countries. So uh, it was really nice to have his own opinion. So yeah, we did sustainable agriculture in the, during this semester. And then uh, in the third one, I went to the University of Belfast and where we uh, focused more about food fraud. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that was interesting as well, and it was fun to see how the different universities work uh, actually, mm -hmm. and how the exams are different. It was uh, challenging, but mm -hmm. also we had a lot of practical activity. We did a summer school where we were supposed to create uh, our startup, and okay. so <laughs> yeah, I mean, not for real, but as um, a course, we had to learn how to build a business plan and how to do a market research. And that was really, really a cool. In fact, this master is uh, centered on um, training entrepreneurs and uh, the leader of the future of food. So I, I hope to, <laughs> to be one of them. In the Amazing. So um, yeah. this uh, summer school where you are, you know, 
prototyping a startup, basically. Yeah. Uh, what exactly. was your idea? What was your team's idea? Um, so we had to deal with alternative proteins. So we um, invented a product with insects, mm -hmm. actually. And so we wanted to make an egg, but with insects. So not the chicken egg, but um, really weird idea. <laughs> But actually, our teachers liked it, and they proposed us to work on it uh, with our thesis that I'm writing right now. So I'm in the lab analyzing uh, crickets right now. Wow, really, really okay. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, <laughs> this is an idea of what you might pursue further. Yeah, it, it could be, um, actually. So now we are trying to see what we came up with the research. And then maybe we will ask for some funds uh, after the graduation to create uh, our product. And I really hope that uh, That's amazing. Uh, it, it, it will work. Yeah, I mean, insects, it's a really problematic um, theme because uh, the consumer didn't, don't really accept it, especially in mm -hmm. the occidental countries in Europe. Uh, it's something we are not used to, but they have all the potential to become a uh, food of the future yeah. because they are sustainable they don't need a lot of resources and already two billion of people eat them regularly so mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we we have a good basis exactly <laughs> and so more, more of you are writing your thesis about this are you all writing yeah. it from the uh, microbiological point point of view or are you writing it from different perspectives like you are la in lab testing someone is more about the consumer communication so how how is that working yeah it it, 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 it you explained it perfectly we are uh, five in my team and two, two of us are in the University of Turin, so I'm uh, taking care of the microbiological and safety part. Mm -hmm. My colleague in Turin is doing the technological part, so we will do some biscuits together with the cricket flour, then we will test them and convince our um, friends to <laughs> eat them, maybe. <laughs> they will hate us forever, but I hope not. And um, then we have two other uh, colleagues in uh, Stuttgart that are working on the nutritional part, Part. and another colleague in Poland, in Warsawa, who is studying the market uh, part. So we are doing a thesis from all different aspects, so it's really interesting. And, uh, it, it was a nice opportunity this master gave us to, yeah. to work in this way. Definitely. I think this is a great approach because on this way, if you all manage your, your thesis somehow still connected to the project, but independently on different fields, uh, you will have a team when you, for example, you want to stand in front of investors where you can say that each of you represents some of the expertise what is needed to bring this startup to a successful uh, successful level. So very interesting approach. Uh, and also when you are uh, when you are attending the universities in different countries and cities, uh, are you mixed with the students who are full-time studying in that uh, university or you are always in the classroom with only the EIT food uh, master's students? Um, so in Turin we were uh, only us, uh, so the people of this master, but in the other university we were mixed with uh, other students uh, from uh, different masters so yeah unfortunately being online it was a bit hard to um, connect with the other students we had some team project uh, that gave us the um, possibility to meet someone but i i think that when this master will be live it will be a really really, really nice uh, Definitely. experience and everything yeah. So yeah, the, the, it's also nice that we are mixing between all the university and, and everyone can choose his own path. Uh, so you, then you are mixed with the people of the first year and second year. We are, so yeah, I, I've made a lot of friends uh, from all parts of the world. Uh, so amazing, yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. So um, I assume that's the same for the for EIT uh, as well, but. Um, with our educational program, it's very important for us to, to equip uh, our, 
alumni with tools that they can become um, active and take action towards a better food system to fight climate change. So you as a graduated climate shaper, uh, what do you, how do you see your role in your community? And I know that you live in Turin and now you are at your parents, which is again another location yet in, in Italy. So how do you see, how do you take action? So right now, one thing that I'm doing that I really, really love and I really believe it, it's this volunteering activity that it's born uh, in Turin that is called Solidarietà Alimentare. And uh, it, it, it is uh, a group of students, uh, actually. The, this activity it was born during the lockdown one year ago in May 2020. And we collect uh, the fruit and the vegetables from the wholesalers of, um, of Turin, of all the region of Piedmont. Mm -hmm. So we go in this big place where all the um, sailors are and all the fruit and vegetables that they, they don't sell because maybe they are ugly or um, they, they, we, we collect it simply. We, we collect it, they donate to us fruit and vegetables, we select it, we um, uh, choose the best one, and then we are connected with more than 50 associations that bring this, this food to the poor families or people in need. And it's really nice because in one year we gained more than 50 associ associations, more than 200 volunteers. We are all university students under 30 years old, uh, and we uh, collected, I think, 200,000 tons of food, wow. and we saved it. And uh, <laughs> so it, it's really nice. It's a really nice environment. They are growing a lot. I think maybe they are the only one uh, that do this in Italy and that they are so organized and we don't, uh, we have also fresh fruit and vegetables, which is something that not um, always happens when donating food to, yeah, yeah, to people. Mm. And yeah, then I think also the, from the environmental point of view, we saved a lot of uh, emissions that usually this food uh, uh, produce when it's wasted. So it has a lot of um, good points. And I really, really like this, uh, this activity and I'm happy I found them. So I, I go there every week. <laughs> so if someone is uh, interested and is in Turin or in that in Piedmont area, how can they apply and be part of this uh, program? And how much time does it require from you to actively be part of this? So um, they can write on the Instagram page. Uh, I will say it again. It's called Solidarietà Alimentare. And we also have a website page when you can apply to volunteer. And but it's a really nice environment. We are all youngs, and we we have fun while working with the music. And uh, so it's uh, we we meet uh, usually only on Friday. Mm -hmm. So you are free to come or not. Of course, uh, it's not uh, mandatory to come on Fridays. Uh, we are so many that even if. I, sometimes I don't go there for a couple of weeks. It's not. It's not a problem. It's um, we all have our lives and careers and everything to take care of. So uh, yeah, once a week, um, have fun with pizza for lunch, uh, <laughs> and then you can bring home some vegetables. My roommates are really happy because <laughs> we don't have to buy them. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's it's nice. I will recommend it uh, to anyone. It, it it was a nice way to don't always be at home during the lockdown. Uh, Definitely, and yeah. and you also managed to redistribute this food and avoid uh, them being wasted. So I always yeah. have one uh, final question for the, okay. uh, for the alumni. And excuse me, I have another <laughs> visitor. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, he's I also very that. interested. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so, okay. um, so the question is, um, how do you see, how would you picture your preferred food future? So how, what, what is the food future you would like to live in? Um, so a future where if I go to a restaurant and I say I don't eat meat, people <laughs> will not look bad at me, <laughs> actually. No, it, it's funny, but uh, since I'm a vegetarian, I'm really seeing this uh, 
I don't know, like judging from why are you not eating meat? And I also have yeah. to explain like, okay, guys, I'm also doing for you, <laughs> you know. And no, apart from the jokes, I, I really believe that uh, all this field of the, the alternative proteins and all the technologies that are uh, arising now um, will help um, us, the people, to have more choice to, to to have a more wide diet and also to to not eat meat at every meal i'm i'm boring i know but when i go to the supermarket it's um it's a bit hard because i don't have so many possibilities we see always the same three four vegetables uh, uh, all year round so i, I just hope we have more options yeah. and so um I will repeat that. In the meanwhile, I saw that someone asked you to repeat the name of the organization in Turin. Okay, Solidarietà Alimentare. Okay. <laughs> I, I can I please, write please it, also uh, write in the it, comment. Uh, in the okay. Box. Uh, and in the okay. meanwhile, I can completely understand um, uh, your wish for the future. Um, I am still a flexitarian, so I, I do sometimes consume meat when I know where it's coming from and and maybe it's actually, well, the sometimes is sometimes because I don't necessarily, I cannot necessarily afford uh, buying that meat every single day and it also would not be uh, healthy, healthy for us, healthy for the environment. Uh, what I wish, and I think that would also help your future to come through, uh, uh, true, um, become true, is that people will understand that cooking with vegetables can be um, can be actually very creative, very diverse, uh, very filling, and uh, I think we are just not used to it. And people are t people tend to buy always the same products in the supermarket when they go there. And as you said, always the same vegetables are available. So it's like kind of what is the chicken and the egg situation, which was uh, which was first. Uh, but I kind of want to challenge everyone, try to every week just buy one product, what, or, and like uh, preferably a fresh produce, what you haven't tried before and try to create a recipe yourself uh, by, by implementing just basic principles, how to pair flavors with each other. Is salty, uh, is, is it going with umami better or is it too much salt then? Or is that bitter is better with a bit of sweet, bit of, bit of umami and like try to experiment because you can also create your own, own dishes and it will also make you feel way better. Um, yeah, and also I see that Natalie is asking the name of your master program. So okay, master in food systems by EIT Food. I will write okay, uh, thank it you, down Martina. again. <laughs> Don't worry. It just you will see my face moving, but <laughs> That's okay. Okay. That's okay. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, in Thank you for being, sharing these few minutes with me. For those who joined us um, later, don't worry because the, the entire conversation will be available on IGTV afterwards. And also check out the Future Food Alumni Instagram page where you can see all of the previous 80 uh, alumni who we featured in these sessions and, and you can go and watch on IGTV or on our YouTube channel their stories in such short digestible formats. And those who uh, would like to join uh, the upcoming Food and Climate Shaper boot camps, uh, because maybe you are not willing to start the full-on two-year master program, but you still want to get more involved in the food system and how to take action through food, uh, check out the futurefood.academy website and see the upcoming dates for our boot camps. So thank you everyone again uh, for staying with us. Thank you, Martina. It was lovely to reconnect and we will stay in touch. Thank to you. Thank you. It was nice to talk again. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.